Hello and welcome to this market special from Business Today. I'm Udayan Mukherjee. With me is Abha Bakaya, and our guest on the show today is one of the most successful mutual fund managers in India, Harsha Upadhyay, who runs a galaxy of funds at Kotak Mahindra Asset Management Company as its president and chief investment officer, Equity. Harsha, great to have you on the show. Before we talk about the markets, I want to ask you about what your experience has been in the month of August, because we heard that there has been some outflows from mutual funds, not in all categories, but in some categories. Uh, so if you could start by telling us uh, which categories of funds you've seen some kind of slowdown in inflows or even outflows and what the SIP experience has been at Kota KMC. Uh, then you're right. I think uh, the numbers uh, in terms of equity inflows for the month of August were not so great. While it is still a positive about 6,000 crores uh, for the month at the industry level, uh, this has been much lower than uh, what we used to see in the early part of the year. Uh, clearly, July was a slower month as compared to June and that trend has continued into August. Uh, while this has happened, the SIP numbers have continued to be very, very strong. In fact, uh, the current SIP numbers are the highest levels that we have seen in the recent times. Uh, it's about 12,600 odd crores per month. Uh, whereas uh, the, the redemptions have picked up a bit, uh, maybe it's uh, some sort of profit booking at earlier highs uh, as we are reaching uh, 18,500 kind of nifty levels uh, or it could also be uh, uh, due to some other factor but clearly we have seen uh, uh, some level of uh, uh, reduced participation as far as uh, lump sum investments are concerned and also some bit of uh, redemption. So overall the numbers are still positive but it is much lower than uh, what we have seen let's say between uh, Jan to June of this year. As a fund manager do you share this caution that you are witnessing from your investors, the domestic investors? I mean do you find the market overheated or overvalued after the spectacular run-up that we've seen over the last couple of months uh, or would you stay the course? Uh, with the end, we would have been happy if markets were at uh, levels that we had seen uh, in, in the month of June, for example. Uh, that was definitely lower than the fair range of valuations when you look at long-term averages. Uh, but we have seen a very sharp rally of about 15% odd uh, in the last two months. So to that extent, uh, uh, there is some bit of uh, valuation correction that has happened uh, on the upside. Uh, currently, we are trading at uh, slightly higher uh, valuation levels as compared to long-term averages. So I would say, uh, to that extent, the risk levels have increased in the market, but it's not uh, something that one should be uh, too, too worried about uh, as yet. Mm. Uh, you know, we'll talk at length about the portfolios that you run, but in some of your portfolios, you have a fair bit of exposure to the global sectors like IT. I mean, you own the Infosys and TCSs of the world as top weights in some of your funds too. But I mean, how would you approach that space given that there has been some skepticism because of the global situation, but off late there has been a pickup and a pullback in those stocks as well. How, how would you position yourself there now? Uh, then while we do have a couple of IT names in our portfolio, but uh, if you look at the entire portfolio, you won't find an overweight position on the IT sector. And clearly we were one of the first fund houses to actually uh, reduce or completely avoid mid cap and small cap IT names sometime even before the markets peaked last year in October to, uh, 2021. So to that extent, uh, from then onwards, we have been uh, cautious on the IT sector. Uh, while, while the management commentary is still uh, quite positive, we believe that uh, things are not uh, likely to be uh, 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 same as you go forward. Uh, there is every likelihood of uh, for, uh, 2023 IT budgets to get delayed or even curtailed to some extent. And we are already seeing some pressures on the margin uh, across companies. Uh, the hiring numbers across the industry has been quite muted uh, in the recent time. So all these things point to the fact that uh, business momentum in the IT sector is, uh, is somewhat uh, stalling. Uh, while uh, in the in the earlier period uh, this sector gave higher than market average uh, in terms of earnings growth and that's when we saw uh, an outperformance from the sector but as you go ahead uh, we believe that domestic focused industries could do much better than uh, uh, global focused uh, industries since uh, domestic growth is still resilient and still six uh, percent plus so we are betting on some of the domestic businesses as compared to IT sector and it continues to be an underweight position uh, across our portfolios. Okay, at a time like this, Harsha, would you stick with perhaps the uh, you know the the large caps, the ones that have a credible history of uh, performance, or would you take those contra bets in a market that has been extremely volatile over the last few months? 
Uh, we are sticking to mostly established large cap names across uh, uh, the mandates where we can take exposure to large caps. Obviously, there are also uh, mid cap strategies and the small cap strategies which run mostly uh, uh, predominantly on mid and small cap categories. Uh, on, on, on just the valuation front, we believe that as I mentioned earlier, uh, large cap segment is slightly above fair valuation uh, when you look at it from a uh, long term perspective, uh, whereas uh, mid and small caps are trading uh, slightly higher than even large cap segment. And also there is a large degree of outperformance that we have seen uh, from mid, mid and small cap category over the last couple of years in the Indian uh, market. So to that extent, uh, if market continues to be volatile or continues to consolidate at around current levels, uh, we would we would uh, probably see uh, large caps doing much better both in terms of uh, uh, returns uh, uh, as well as uh, volatility I would say. So to that extent our preference wherever possible uh, has been slightly towards uh, large caps. Hmm. And in this large cap financial space Harsha, I mean I was looking at your equity opportunities fund portfolio which is a lar very large fund. Uh, you know some of your top holdings are ICICI and State Bank of India and it's interesting because you know maybe a couple of years ago the top holding would be HDFC Bank. but you know, across mutual fund portfolios, this seems to be a recurring theme. The presence of ICICI and SBI over an HDFC bank. Uh, could you just take us through whether your uh, priorities or uh, preferences have shifted over the last few years in terms of large cap financials? Uh, Udayan, you are absolutely right. I think if you had seen our portfolios maybe uh, three to four years earlier, uh, our top weights in the banking sector would have been very different than uh, what you are seeing today. Uh, clearly, some of the names that you mentioned, uh, ICICI Bank and SBI, have been uh, uh, doing quite good on the asset quality front. Uh, in the in the recent times, I think the, there is not much of a difference between the asset quality situation of uh, some of these banks and the uh, the earlier ones where we used to have uh, usual overweight on. Uh, the credit growth uh, for the system is still uh, has been growing at uh, double digits, and it's been uh, consistently improving since the beginning of this uh, financial year. So uh, on one hand, you are seeing uh, asset quality issues uh, behind us and secondly, credit growth outlook is improving uh, and there is uh, adequate capital uh, on, on most of the banks in terms of uh, growth capital. And, and uh, we believe that this is uh, uh, at the beginning of the cycle in terms of overall investment cycle for the country and uh, that is when one need to bet on uh, uh, financials uh, because they are closely linked to economic uh, outlook. And also this is a, a time where interest rates are also moving up which means uh, some of the large uh, banks which have a higher CASA and higher ability to retain that CASA would be the ones who will be able to get better margins and better spreads as compared to let's say uh, non-banking financial companies or smaller banks. So that's where you see the tilt towards some of the larger banks uh, in our portfolio. Mm. We spoke about a global facing sector like IT uh, a few minutes ago. But I want to ask you about chemicals as well because people seem to be mixed in their views on that space and how it, well it could do over the next couple of years given some of the global tailwinds. I did spot an SRF in your portfolio but, but if you could take us through what your thoughts are on playing that space now. Uh, we have been very very bullish on the chemical space for the last couple of years uh, that has worked out quite well for the fund and for our investors. We continue to remain very bullish. Uh, the China plus one opportunity which everyone has been talking about is, is definitely in front of uh, chemical sector and uh, some of the companies have already been witnessing um, higher than expected growth due to China plus one opportunity. Uh, the growth rates have been uh, very very uh, strong uh, and, and most of the specialty uh, chemical companies have been you know, putting up more capex every year and th that uh, additional capacity is also being used up. And when you look at it from a global perspective, I am sure that uh, many of the global majors are already looking at diversifying beyond China for their uh, supplies because we have seen uh, over the last 3-4 years several issues uh, cropping up uh, started with uh, trade relations between US and China soaring a little and then thereafter we had uh, COVID disruptions and the lockdowns which again affected uh, supplies from there and off late we have been uh, hearing about China Taiwan issue as well. So given all this uh, uh, we believe that many of the global majors who were dependent only on China for their supplies will start looking out uh, incrementally more from other regions and there uh, India de definitely chance much better uh, uh, stands much better chance. So that's where uh, we believe this uh, we believe that uh, China plus one opportunity that uh, 
is is uh, being talked about is there for uh, next few years for indian chemical companies to grab okay what are you expecting from earnings this time maharsha you know we have seen uh, the impact of higher prices squeeze on margins across the board what are you anticipating this time when it comes to earnings and the kind of indicators of growth you know markets seem to be on fire but is this going to be corroborated by the kind of numbers that we see abha as you said uh, clearly uh, june quarter was something that uh, was uh, quite muted in terms of uh, the delivery of earnings numbers uh, we do not think that uh, september quarter quarter is going to be anything different in fact uh, we could see a continued pressure on margins uh, as as commodity price inflation still is going to be an issue for most of the corporates mm-hmm. and there could be some a bit of uh, inventory losses as well as commodities have corrected sharply uh, during this quarter Uh, but uh, just like most pocket market participants we also believe that this is more of a transient issue as of now uh, maybe one or two quarters down the line the commodity cost pressures should uh, reduce quite a bit which we are already seeing across commodities and even uh, energy related commodities of late have been correcting which uh, points to the fact that uh, if it remains here or if it continues to move downwards then incremental pain on the profitability margin should be less so while uh, uh, there could be one or two uh, percentage points of uh, uh, downward tick in terms of overall earnings for uh, financial year 23 based on september 23 uh, earnings uh, but we believe that uh, financial year 24 earnings should remain intact and that's where uh, we don't believe that uh, the the uh, commodity cost pressure that you will see in september will continue for a longer period what what is your stance on public sector companies harsha as a fund manager uh, i mean sbi aside um, i mean can you identify some pockets in public sector where you have significant investments i mean uh, are you playing certain themes like say defense because i think bharat electronics is one of your holdings uh, but if you could give us some flavor of how you have approached that entire basket uh as as uh, always it's not a homogeneous sector and to that extent uh, based on just ownership to take a call is very very difficult so what we have done is we have looked at underlying businesses and s- seen wherever we believe that uh, business is either turning around or going to grow at a steady pace and if uh, 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 those things are happening then in most cases the valuations are in long term investors favor right Uh, whether you look at uh, uh, financials uh, within the PSU segment or non-financials, in most cases, I would say uh, valuations are uh, pretty low as compared to the private sector counterparts. That's never uh, an issue to uh, really worry about. So, what we need to usually look at is whether the business is sustainable, whether the business is growing at a pace uh, which is uh, higher than the market average growth, etc. And that's where we have been betting on some of these companies, as you mentioned. Uh, we have had a, a significant uh, uh, position in terms of uh, defense uh, uh, equipment manufacturer we do have a uh, 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 position in the pu- public sector banks which are large so uh, by and large we have been very selective uh, it's not that uh, we have made a cut between uh, private and uh, public sector and uh, taken a view on one way or the other it's mostly based on the underlying businesses i would say So what sectors are you most underweight on Harsha at this point in time relative to the benchmarks I mean you mentioned IT but other than that what are your biggest underweight calls uh, as as i mentioned IT is definitely one of the large underweight uh, sectors apart from that uh, um, global commodities is another area where we have been underweight again uh, the thesis is simple that uh, global growth is uh, kind of uh, a uh, sluggishan is likely to remain uh, quite muted as compared to domestic growth and uh, that's where we believe that it's better to play uh, some of the domestic uh, names uh, which are which are focused on domestic uh, uh, triggers uh, we are also underweight on uh, uh, fmcg for example although it's a domestic business uh, we believe that the valuations are pretty high uh, compared to market as well as compared to history uh, while uh, things are quite steady in that business as well but we believe the uh, cyclical pockets uh, within the domestic uh, 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 economy are much more uh, 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 are uh, much more better placed in terms of uh, providing out performance if this economic momentum continues in the uh, indian context so to that extent uh, i would say it uh, global commodities fmcg and and to an extent even uh, consumer durables uh, where valuations are on the higher side these are the pockets where uh, we have been underweight on would you add real estate to that list harsha i'm just curious uh, you know what you're perceiving as a trend when it comes to realty there seems to be all kinds of opinion when it comes to that sector it looked like it was reviving but given current conditions one can't be sure 
uh, we are in the camp that believes that uh, things are reviving in the real estate sector. I think uh, RERA has been a complete uh, 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 change uh, in terms of the overall sectoral outlook that we had on, uh, on this particular sector. And uh, clearly affordability has increased while we are seeing uh, the margin interest rates moving up and hence uh, housing loans will become expensive. But we believe that uh, the income levels have also increased over a period of time and when you look at uh, affordability today as compared to a decade back for example is, is quite high. So to that extent I think uh, the triggers are uh, in place for increased demand in uh, real estate. And also when you look at inventory levels across top 8 or 10 cities apart from uh, 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 some of the markets in the north, everything seems to be uh, well balanced in, in terms of supply and, and incremental demand. So to that extent I would say that uh, uh, we do have a positive opinion on the real estate. Uh, but uh, having said that it's very difficult to play only through real estate. Uh, there are not too many names that you can bet on. So the way we are constructing our portfolio is to look at uh, allied businesses which will get an uptick uh, if real estate sector does well. So the entire gamut of uh, home improvement segment is what we are betting on. So depending on the mandate, depending on the liquidity of each of these uh, stocks, uh, you could find a couple of names in most of our uh, portfolios. Finally, Harsha, you know, while there has been a lot of up and down over the last one year in terms of the index and stock prices, uh, at an aggregate level over the last one year, uh, trading one year, you know, mutual fund, ec most equity mutual funds or even the index has not returned too much. It's been lackluster in terms of performance. As you look forward into the next year, are you hopeful that the market will generate better returns or given the global uncertainties, we could easily have another uh, pedestrian or lackluster uh, return in terms of performance? Uh, well then I would I would say that uh, over the next three to five years, uh, definitely Indian corporate world is uh, looking like it will it will deliver at least low teen to mid teen kind of uh, earnings numbers. Maybe it will be a little more back ended depending on when we see uh, a kind of uh, reduction in terms of commodity cost pressure, etc. So rather than taking a guess on the next one year, I would say that uh, anyways equity should be invested for a, a longer period. And if one is looking at three to five years at the minimum. Uh, we, we, uh, we believe that uh, earnings growth should be in that uh, low teens to mid teens kind of uh, range and uh, assuming that the valuations hold then you should uh, generally be looking to get that kind of returns over a long period of time. Uh, though it may not be a secular kind of a market but uh, for those long term investors who are able to bear that volatility I think uh, the returns are going to be still uh, decent. Good to hear your thoughts today Harsha as always. Good luck with your funds and thank you very much for your time today. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.